Shalom, and welcome to Via Hafta Yisrael, a Hebrew phrase which means you shall love Israel. We hope you'll stay with us for the next 30 minutes as our teacher, Dr. Baruch, shares his expository teaching from the Bible. Dr. Baruch is the senior lecturer at the Zera Avraham Institute based in Israel. Although all courses are taught in Hebrew at the Institute, Dr. Baruch is pleased to share this weekly address in English. To find out more about our work in Israel, please visit us on the web at loveisrael.org. That's one word, loveisrael.org. Now, here's Baruch with today's lesson. Well, one of the ways that, that we should think of ourselves is as the servants of God. And as servants, we should be identified in this world as such. And therefore, the things that surround us, the things that are part of our life, they need to be used and seen as vessels which, which contribute to us serving you and, and exemplifying a God-pleasing testimony. So with that said, let's look at our new chapter this evening in our study of the book of Exodus. Exodus chapter 28, and we're going to see a change whereby we have been speaking about the tabernacle and its courtyard and the various vessels or instruments or temple or tabernacle furniture that was in these locations. This evening, we're going to see that God gives to Moses a different revelation not on the, the instruments, but on the garments of the priests. And first and foremost, we need to understand that word priest in its proper context. Now, many of you know the word Kohen. Many uh, Jewish individuals have after their last name Kohen. And Kohen means priest, but it can also rightly be understood as a one who serves, who has been commissioned for a task. And that task has expectations and purposes. Well, look, if you would, to this 20th chapter of the book of Exodus and verse 1. Once more, God is addressing himself to Moses the children of Israel are still at Mount Sinai, a place of revelation. And we read in verse 1, And you bring near unto yourself, so cause to come near to you. And again, he's speaking to Moses. He says, Aaron, your brother, and his sons with him from the midst of the children of Israel. So we see something. We know that there are those 12 tribes that, that originated out of Jacob, Yaakov. And we're going to see that Moses, who is from the tribe of Levite, and a Levite is one who escorts, one who walks alongside of, one who is uniquely joined together with another. The Levites were escorts. They were joined together with the priests for a joint service. But here, what is being emphasized is solely the priests. And these Kohanim, these priests, are from the tribe of Levite. But notice what God tells Moses to do. He says, Hekrev Alecha et Aharon, bring near to you Aaron, or Aharon, your brother. So the priestly family is a Levitical family, but not all Levites are priests, only the Levites that are from the household who are descendants from the first priest, and he was the first high priest as well. And I'm speaking about Aharon, Aaron. And not just Aaron, your brother, but his sons with them from the midst of the children of Israel. So they are being set apart. They're taken from Israel 
in a unique way for a unique purpose, and that is to work in the tabernacle, and then later on, when the children of Israel have inherited Jerusalem, that tabernacle will be no more, but it will be a permanent structure. And we know that King Solomon will build this initially, and it will be the temple, the Bet HaMikdash, in the holy city of Jerusalem. But he says, bring near to you Aaron your brother and his sons with him from the midst of the children of Israel, le kahano li. That means for him to serve me. And then we have the name of Aaron and his brother and his sons. We see Aharon, Nadav, Avihu, Eleazar, and Itamar, the sons of Aaron. Now, if we look here, we find that there are mentioned five individuals. Look at it again. We see Aaron, and then Nadav, Abihu, Eleazar, and Itamar. These four sons of Aaron and Aaron himself make five. Now, five is usually a number of incompletion or lacking. And why that is here, this number five, these five names, is because the tabernacle worship and even the temple worship that was done in the past is not going to be a complete worship. It's still going to lack something. And a verse that I've alluded to in our study going back to Exodus 21 is that there's coming a time when we are called to worship God in spirit and truth. And that's only possible through the Messiah. Many times I've been asked, can a non-believer worship God? And the answer is no, he cannot. Now, he can pray to God, but he does not have the capacity to praise God, to worship God. That only comes today through faith in Yeshua. I'm not speaking about the past. I'm speaking about what Yeshua said, that there's coming a day and is now when God requires that you worship him in spirit and truth. God is free. He can hear anyone's prayers and respond. But worship is unique. And this is what we're speaking about here. But the worship in the tabernacle and the temple that followed was incomplete. incomplete. It was not to the full extent as it will be when we worship God ultimately and finally and eternally in the new Jerusalem. Look now to verse 2. And you shall make big day Kodesh. Big day Kodesh. The, the holy garments for Aaron, your brother. And what's the purpose of these garments? Well, these garments, it says here, like Havod u Tiferet, for glory and for splendor. Love that word Tiferet in, in Hebrew. It speaks about a, a splendor, that which is awesome to behold verse 3 and you shall say to all the wise of heart which i have filled him with a spirit of wisdom so here we need to make a distinction as we move forward in the book of exodus realize something We've talked about these vessels, the Ark of the Covenant, the table of showbread, the menorah, the altar, all the vessels that go along with them, and the tabernacle structure itself. These pillars, these planks, these curtains, these hangings, these screens, and such. But realize, not everyone is called to participate in the construction of these things but he says here very clearly he says to moses you you speak 
literally it's a command in the future form and you shall speak to all everyone who is wise all the wise ones of heart who i have filled him meaning it's in the plural initially then it goes to singular why is that that moses needs to realize there's more than one but to look at each one individually who has a ruach chokma the spirit of wisdom and it's only through the spirit of wisdom that that they will make the garments for Aaron to sanctify him that is to set him apart for a purpose for him to serve me so twice we have the word in a verbal construction for serving and it's that same word that the noun can be derived from the same three letters as Kohen as a priest so we're speaking about the priestly garments and a priestly family all of that has been revealed to us and now look to verse 4 we're going to to focus in on these garments it says and these are the garments which they shall make. We have the choshen, this is the breastplate, the afod, this is the, the vest, the ma'il, which is a, a robe, the ketonet tashbets, which is a, a tunic, which is checkered, and then we have the mitznefet, which is a, a type of hat. And then finally, the avnet, which is a, a sash. And this sash is, according to tradition, I want to emphasize that, it separates the upper body from the lower body. And it does so in a type of de decorative way. But it's not the primary thing that holds everything in place. In a moment, we're going to see that there is a unique garment that is connected to the ephod, that is that vest, that is going to be more related to holding things in place. Now, the avnet, that sash, it has a minor role in doing that, but not to the extent of the, the garment that we'll mention in a moment. He says, we're still in the fourth verse, the middle of verse four. Ve'asu big day kodesh, and they shall make the holy garments for Aharon, your brother, and for his sons. Why? For him to serve me. And it's that word kohen. Le kahano li. And here we're speaking about perhaps not just Aaron, but for each individual one, these five individuals, that they might serve God and do so collectively but with an individual responsibility. Now I want to go back to this verse. Notice we see how many garments there are. There's the breastplate. There's the vest, the robe, the checkered tunic, the, the hat, and the avnet, the sesh, altogether six. And that number six relates to grace. So worship is always connected to the grace of God. It's not by chance that there's six, six garments. Verse five. And they, those who do the work, they shall, and it could be the priests themselves, they shall take the gold, the techelet, that is that, that blue material or turquoise material, and the royal purple, and the crimson, or it could be scarlet, and the linen. So we take these four materials, and the number four is a global number. And therefore, this worship, it was for not just Israel. Israel were the leaders, but it was to 
impact the world. And we know that because I read earlier tonight from Isaiah chapter 12. And in that kingdom experience, which Isaiah chapter 11 and 12 relates to, we know that the knowledge of God and that knowledge is a outcome of worship. Worship, when it's done properly, it will bring us insight, illumination, revelation from God. And we are told in Isaiah that the knowledge of God is going to cover the earth as the waters cover the seas. So worship is so vital for us to understand the things of God. Look now to, to verse 6. And they shall make the ephod, that is that vest. And we have something that stands out. Now, when we look and we go back to verse 4, it says, these are the garments which they shall make. And the first one is the choshen, the breastplate. But it's not going to be until next week that we look at the breastplate. We're going to skip over that, not because of my desire or purpose or something, because the Word of God does it itself. And sometimes we, we hold off on things, we keep them to the end. That which is first is going to be spoken of last. And the reason for this is of its significance. It has a great purpose, this breastplate. As I said, we'll talk about that next week. We want to follow the order of Scripture. What it reveals, therefore, verse 6, and they shall make a vest of gold, of techelet, that blue, argaman purple, tola'at sheni, crimson or scarlet, and this twisted linen. And it says, Ma'ase Choshev. Choshev is to think. So it's a word for a type of work that requires insight, intelligence, discernment to be able to do. So again, the FO, this, this vest is emphasized. Now verse 7. From this vest, we read that there's going to be two, and these would be straps that are over the shoulder. Now, how do we know that? Because of the name of the straps. It says here, shte ketefot. Now, the word ketef is the word for shoulder, ketef. And this is the word in the plural. Now, when it's plural, ketefayim. But tefot tells us that we're talking about shoulder straps, not the shoulders in and of themselves. So two soldier, soldiers, shoulder straps for the purpose of joining, they shall be to him or to it, to the ephod. And, and there should be on the two ends, and once again, for it to be joined together. So we have this vest. And how it's going to be put together is an emphasis upon these two shoulder straps. And why do I say an emphasis? We'll keep reading. Look now to verse 8. Now, remember, I shared with you earlier that the avnet, that is that sash. Traditionally, we know it's more of a decorative uh, piece. It has a purpose of, of separation or sanctification. It is an instrument of, of discernment, but it also can be something that holds together, but not the primary one. And why is that? Look at verse, verse 8. We read here, Vechashev apudato. Apudato is from the word ephod, but it's feminine, not masculine. And therefore, according to all the authorities, we're talking about kind of a, a belt, the belt of this vest. And it holds this primary garment in place. So once more, look carefully at verse 8. Vechashev, this is this word for intelligence, thinking, discernment. And a, a thinking of its belt. 
which shall be unto it, unto it is probably unto the ephod, the vest itself. And it shall be as its work from it, it shall be, meaning it's of the same material. It's part of it, and it's made from the same material because we have gold and this blue and purple and scarlet and this, this twisted linen. Verse 9. And you shall take two stones of Shohan. Now, as I say, the street that we live on is Shoham. And Shoham is a type of stone. There's different interpretations of what type of stone it is. I think some Bibles will say onyx. But the fact of the matter is, we're not entirely sure. So let's just learn the Hebrew word shoham. So take verse, verse 9. And you shall take two stones of shoham, and you shall engree, engrave upon them the names of the children of Israel. Now, worship, notice something. We're dealing with worship, and specifically the ministry of the priests. And they are going to minister unto God. We've already seen this. Le kahano li, to minister to me, but the purpose of this is to impact the children of Israel. Now, realize, it is only when I worship properly is there going to be a spiritual consequence, an outcome, a result that is going to bring about a change whereby I can, I can serve God as well. What does that mean? Carry out His will. Do his purposes. So look again. Take two shoham stones and you shall engrave upon them the names of the children of Israel. These names, of course, are the names of the 12 tribes. Verse 10. Six of their names upon one stone and the remaining six names upon the second stone. Now, what do you see here? Well, very important. You see an emphasis once more on the number six. See, it's only when we are recipients of grace that we're going to be able to worship God and serve God. These numbers are not just, just coincidence. As I shared with you last week and the week before that, there is a tendency for the same numbers to repeat and be referenced over and over in the Scripture. So here we take this 12, which relates to the people of God, and we divide it in two to get two sixes because the people of God are those who are the recipients of God's grace. Verse, verse 10 at the end. Now, there's an order. We divide them in two, and we do so, ke todo tam, according to their genealogy. Almost all the scribes and the interpreters of, of the Scripture see this as according to their birth order. So all of this has relevance. And a good study to do is to look at the names of the children of Israel and what they mean in the book of Genesis. We, we have shared with you. The scripture itself tells you when you read about the birth of the 12 sons of Yaakov, the naming of these sons, we are told what each name means, why they were named the name that they were given. So all of this has significance. Look now to verse, verse 11. Maaseh Cheresh. Now, Maaseh Cheresh has to do with uh, a skilled. Cheresh has to do with a, a man who is skilled as a laborer. So this work that's being done with these stones being engraved, with the names of the 12 tribes of Israel divided by two, six on one strap, six on the other. 
They are the work of a skilled uh, uh, art person. Someone who knows what he's doing. And it says they are like, and this is the implication, Evan Pituche Chotam. Chotam is a signing, a ceiling. And this ceiling is probably a reference to the singlet rain. And the singlet rain would always have a, a symbol that had an identifying symbol engraved on it to show who was making this, this agreement, this law. And therefore, we have here that these, these stones are also going to be engraved with these names and they're going to be done by a skillful artesian. And he is going to do it as he did the work of an engraved or a singlet ring. And you shall engrave these two stones concerning the names of the children of Israel all around. So these stones are going to have the names of the children of Israel written around them. And they are going to be inlaid. They're going to be settings, settings, in other words, of gold. This is how you shall make them, verse 12. And you shall set the two stones upon the shoulder straps of the ephod, of the vest. So the stones, notice what he says here. These two stones that have the names of the children of Israel, one on one shoulder strap, the other on the other shoulder strap, they are going to be placed on the shoulder straps of the, the vests. For what purpose? Well, these are avne zikaron, livne Israel, stones for the remembrance of the children of Israel. So this has an implication. Aaron and his sons, these priests, and this has some new covenant implications to it. The reason is that the believers today, both Jew and Gentile, we have been made into a royal priesthood. In the order of our great high priest, Melchizedek, and that is in the order of how Messiah came. And the point here is this. The word zikaron for remembering, remembering something, is also attached to the concept of a covenant in the scripture. So the priests serve and they want to minister unto God to bring a change, a pleasing change, revelation, all the things that incorporate worship to the children of Israel. They need to remember these priests that they do this in order to impact the children of Israel, to bring the name of, of the children of Israel before the Lord Almighty. So once more, these are, middle of verse 12, stones of for remembrance of the children of Israel, and Aaron shall bear them, carry them, and what's them? Their names before the Lord upon the two, his two shoulder straps. And again it says, Le Zicharon, for memory. So it's being emphasized as he goes and ministers before the Lord, bringing his self before God. He does so in memorial to the children of Israel. Verse 13. And you shall, and here's the word, it should be a, a inlet or an, a setting of gold. Verse 14. Verse 14 is going to be our, our last verse tonight because in verse 15, we get into a long discussion of the breastplate. I'm going to save that for next week. So one more verse, verse 14. It deals with the conclusion of uh, this, this ephod and what is attached to it, not just the shoulder straps, not just these two stones, not just the engraving of the names of the children of Israel, and not just them being set in gold, 
but it says, and two, two sharsharot, these would be two chains of pure gold at the borders. So the borders are going to have these two chains of gold. You shall make them as a pleated, that is a pleated, might be more of a, a like a pleated work, meaning that you should almost like weave the, the gold chain together. It's going to be a pleated type of construction. So two golden you should make these two golden chains of pure gold at the ends, at the borders. You should make them a, a work of braided or pleated. And you shall set the chains that are pleated upon the, the, the settings where these uh, uh, stones were put in. So all of this is to give us a proper understanding of these garments. Now, in some ways, a introductory look at these garments. But God is very precise. He mentions these six garments. And today we've seen that there's been an emphasis on that vest. And how that vest is constructed, the things that it is made with, these stones, these straps, these chains, this belt, and everything that goes along with it. A very thoughtful work of a skilled artisan for the purpose of bringing before God the children of Israel. And I said this had significant uh, uh, implications for believers. Because if we are a new priesthood, therefore we also should be bringing before the living God, Israel, wanting Israel to be transformed, to be changed, because we know something. We know that ultimately that kingdom will not be established until a spiritual change comes to Israel. And that spiritual change will not come until faith in Messiah, Messiah Yeshua, that is Jesus Christ, and until they begin themselves to worship. See, the priests were kind of a, a go-between, a, a broker, we might say. In Hebrew, we use the word metavech, which is kind of a, a broker, an agent, to, so to speak in order to do the work, but the outcome would be upon the people. And now we, as believers, we do the work in order to bring change for God to move among the children of Israel in order that they would be brought to faith, that they would be able to worship God because until Israel worships God, we're not going to see that desired change, this change that comes into the world, where the promises of God become available in the fullest sense. They become available to believers, both Jewish and Gentile believers. So worship is vital. Well, I'll close with this until next week and we study that breastplate. May God richly bless you. Shalom from Israel. Well, we hope you will benefit from today's message and share it with others. Please plan to join us each week at this time and on this channel for our broadcast of loveisrael.org. Again, to find out more about us, please visit our website, loveisrael.org. There you will find articles and numerous other lectures by Baruch. These teachings are in video form. You may download them or watch them in streaming video. Until next week, may the Lord bless you in our Messiah Yeshua, that is, Jesus, as you walk with Him. Shalom from Israel.